did Peter Wright get it wrong, uh, you're crack. Well, it's a big talking point, isn't it? It's, it's looking like he's going to get four weeks, they're talking at least, at the tribunal. And for me, I, I think that is too harsh. For a player that I saw instinctively braced at the very last second when contact was inevitable. And for me, the fear is now that if this is going to be four weeks, he's going to miss a month of football, that let's not be surprised if players start pulling out of contests because that would be the smarter option and be called soft than it is to miss a month of football and really dampen and hurt a team's chances of trying to win games of football because he's such an important player to them. It just doesn't sit easy with me when you watch it in slow-mo to say, oh, he had other options and all these sorts of things. We know how fast the game is. They're coming at each other a million miles an hour and it's instinctive. You don't know in that situation until contact is inevitable what you are going to do. Now, I understand the goalposts have shifted. And first of all, I'll show you a couple of examples from recent years where there's been something similar happen, where both these players have been able to get off at the tribunal. So last year and 2022, we'll take a look at these examples first of all. This was 2022. So a really similar situation. Two players going for the ball right until the last second when Rioli braces for contact. And he was let off at the tribunal because he was able to argue that he had his eyes for the ball right up to the last second. And Tom Lynch last year was able to argue something similar, that contact was inevitable and he braced. Now, I understand the goalposts have shifted, Kingy, in 2024. So I'm okay for Peter Wright to get a suspension now because we have to protect the head. But four weeks is too much. To go from zero to 100 and give him that long out, I don't like. And I, and I think if it's two weeks, we could all, I could anyway say, okay, I understand he's a bit stiff. And when you see it in slow motion, he actually tries to get out of the way at the last minute, Peter Wright. He braces for contact and he turns his body to almost avoid it. So when you see it in super slow-mo, he turns around. So he's actually trying to get out of the way. I think at the, the very last second, he's, he's moving around the contest and sort of more glancing rather than actually piling into him and driving. So, look, for me, it's a bit harsh. But I understand where the game's going. Is it fair? I'm not sure. He's actually trying to protect himself. I'm, I'm with you a little bit, Joey, on that. He's trying. To, he's coming to the ball to meet the ball. The player's coming in for the side king. He's trying to protect himself. But if he was bracing himself, he would have hit him right down the middle. The, brace, the brace is a decision of me over you. I'm going to protect myself at the cost of the player that is on the other side of the coin. And that, that's always the case. I don't think the brace is an out. We've got to change behaviour. The only way you do it is hard and fast, severe penalties. We danced around and have cocked this up for years. That's why you can show those other examples. Because we got it wrong. And we've finally taken a stance, and it's going to cost some players weeks that maybe don't deserve it, or maybe are on a knife's edge. But right now, we need to take a stand. We need to take a direction. I, I, agree, I agree it's a choice, but I think it's a very, very fine line, and it's a harsh penalty for a choice that is a millisecond mm. that didn't have intent. So I completely agree with Jimmy Webster. Why does he do that? Well, we've got to get him out of that because he doesn't, and get, get him yeah. to uh, something else with more care for the other player. That, yeah. that there and to flush someone in the head is the problem. I understand. And, and I think I just feel it's a bit easier to say watching it in slow-mo than at that split second what, what you're trying to do. So uh, what you're trying to say, Joey, is the letter of the law, which the, the guidelines yeah. of the incident and the act are not marrying up right now. Well, what they, what's happening now is we are, we are upgrading the, the impact from whatever it is to the next level up to make it more, to, to protect the head. In a situation like this where a player, oh, I think, is contesting the ball, different to the Jimmy Webster one, different to Tom Stewart a few years ago, can we bring it back to actually what the impact was? So you could argue this impact was high, not severe, but they up it to make it a four-week suspension to go to the tribunal. If it was just high, so if it was graded as careless, high impact, high contact, it's two weeks. Does that sit I don't think in a contest yeah. like that where it's different to when someone chooses, I think, and elects to bump a yeah. bit more deliberately? Now, I know where you're going, and I do think we do need another table for, for head-high trauma mm. because that's what we're taking on. Um, and I don't think it fits necessarily into careless and intentional. I do think you need to look at the intentional side of it. Is it a football act or have you just gone after the head? The Webster one, he just went after the yeah. head. Yeah. So he Agreed. copped the full whack. I, I think you need to make a stand. I think four weeks shakes the, 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 the player unit. Uh, two weeks doesn't, doesn't affect anyone. And, and you might say, that's unfair on Peter Wright. Of course yeah. it is. But if we had done it with Willy Rioli, we may not be having this discussion two years later. Well, maybe it's a choice, a smart choice for players in some situations to make a decision early to avoid that or collision. Just, or, or hands out instead of bracing yeah. the nail.
Headline writers are looking at one incident at the moment and it surrounds uh, Peter Wright. What did you make of this, Jono? His eyes initially on the ball well, they and are. probably not at the very end. Yeah, that's that's the perfect way to assess it. I think we're all looking at it the same way. So he does everything right until real la the last minute where he turns and, and locks his shoulder in and, and bumps Cunningham in the head. So he still, had to, he still has every right to contest the ball, not in that fashion, though. And that's... Uh, he's obviously now... We wait and see what the MRO do. We'll probably go straight to the tribunal and we'll, We've seen uh, we'll lots work of this, from there. Haven't we? It's been a high pressure, high physical game. Yeah. So, if you had your time again, what would you want him to do? So oh. You want him to slow his feet up, maybe put his yeah, hands out? Well, he's either got to go for a complete mark or try and spoil, spoil the ball. You can't turn, unfortunately, and, and, and shape yeah. like that. It's never been any good. Once you leave the ground, I think you're in the MRO's yep. hands. That's, That's probably right. the other thing. The fact that he's jumped into the contest. So, if he potentially runs through and sort of spoils or tries to chest mark it or puts the arms out, John, it's. A bit of a different circumstance, but uh, it's about that. Footy is a game of split seconds, yep. and now you think just makes that opportunity there. Once you're in the air, it's pretty hard to change your momentum and where you're going to hit. So he's just right. got in the air yep. and then and, and obviously um, cleaned uh, cleaned the Swans player up.